In this video, we're going to discuss the formal process of cost minimization. And what you'll notice is that it has a lot of parallels to uh, the processes we had in the theory of consumer behavior. So we're going to start off with a couple of assumptions that will underlie the process. So we believe that a firm okay, has the ability to be able to minimize its costs. And um, there are things that in the process of minimizing costs that it has to take as given. So we'll make two simplifying assumptions that make uh, the procedure for cost minimization a bit more painless. So the first of which is that we assume, as in any case that we've had before, that we are given with a production function with only two inputs, that's namely labor and capital. And uh, the type of labor and capital that we have is homogeneous. So that's homogeneous labor and homogeneous capital. And what that means is very simple in that you cannot distinguish units of labor and units of capital from one another. So what does that mean? For example, when it comes to labor, each and every laborer that you have has the same level of ability, talent, and skill. And uh, same goes with capital. And the way that we measure labor is with regards to how many hours they end up um, working. So that's in labor hours. And when it comes to capital, we measure the number of machine hours that are used. Note that the way we incorporate economic costs, particularly those arising from entrepreneurial, uh, the cost of entrepreneurial services, okay, we include those in capital costs. So it's noted that entrepreneurial costs are included in the capital costs. Okay? And that gives rise to our production function here. Second assumption, and something that I've alluded to in the last, uh, in the previous videos I've had, is that the inputs are hired in a perfectly competitive market. What does that mean? It means that the wage that you pay a laborer and the rental rate of capital that's born out of the production process, okay, you have no control. Each individual firm has no control over that. That's purely determined by the market. We'll get to the structure of perfectly competitive markets in another video, but uh, what remains is that the firm has no control over the wage that uh, that's determined in the market. What's that mean? It cannot give, um, let's say, it cannot specify a certain wage that it wants to pay. So it has to pay the market's wage. Uh, and this is summarized in the fact that W and R are exogenous variables. Exogenous by means that the firm has no control over them. This is something that the firm takes as given because it's determined by the market. So two simplifying assumptions we have two inputs, that's labor and capital, and that the inputs are hired in perfectly competitive markets. Okay. Now, let's formally define something of a goal for a firm, and that is to be able to reap economic profits. Now, economic profits are reaped uh, when you have a positive difference between revenue and cost, right? And to a firm, okay, total cost will denote that as C, uh, this is equal to, okay, the cost of a firm is essentially W, okay, W, which is the wage rate, times the labor hours that are there. So think of this as wage, okay, and your the wage per hour times the number of labor hours right there. This is essentially your total expenditure on labor plus R, which is the rental rate of capital, times K, or the number of machine hours. Okay, so... Uh, this is your total expenditure on uh, labor. And this is your, to this one here is your total expenditure on capital. Okay. So that's our costs. Remember, again, we have two inputs only. That's labor and capital. And that's the basis of our cost function. Now, revenue, okay, revenue for a firm is given by uh, the price that it sets, actually, to, so to speak, strictly speaking, the market sets, times the total production it has. Okay, so that's Q. Or this is equal to P, the market price, times our production function. So that's a function of uh, L and K. Okay. 
then economic profits, okay, economic profits, we'll denote this moving on as pi. That's just pi is equal to revenue less cost, right? So very straightforward. And if we plug in what we found here, so that's P times Q minus uh, WL plus RK. And simplifying it, we get pi is equal to PFLK minus WL minus RK. So this is our economic profit function. This is our revenue function. And this is our cost function. Now, economic, if you'll notice, let's zero in on economic profits here. Economic profits are a function of the amount of labor and capital employed. So you can see that the components of the function are just labor capital. You also have labor and capital there. And what we want to do is we could examine okay, how a firm would opt to choose okay, the amount of labor it chooses to employ measured in labor hours, and the amount of capital it chooses to use, measured in machine hours. And what we could do is we could examine those behaviors in the objective of a firm to be able to maximize profit. And essentially what we're going to derive from that is sort of a derived demand theory of labor and capital inputs. That is, how much uh, of labor and capital will a firm be able to use, okay, Will a firm be able to use, or will a firm opt to use rather, to be able to meet its goal of maximizing profit? For now, okay, what we'll assume is that the firm has already chosen its desired output level and it wants to minimize cost. What does that mean? Think of a firm in this case for cost minimization as they already have a sort of production target. And what they want to do is they want to be able to achieve that target, but they want to achieve that target at the lowest possible cost, okay? So suppose the firm, okay, so on to cost minimization here, suppose the firm has decided to produce a specific output level Q. So it has some sort of production target Q, where Q is positive, right? Q is positive. And we want, okay, what we want to know is how the firm will choose L and K, okay, to be able to produce Q at minimum cost, okay. So that's our goal, okay. And uh, we can mathematically write that problem as this. So we want to minimize, okay. We want to minimize our cost, which is equal to this, subject to, okay, a uh, desired output level. So this is our desired output level. And that is what this all means is that the firm chooses L and K from uh, the existing, okay, what it wants to be its output level. So what we can do now, since you see this is a minimization, this is a constrained optimization process. So we can use, again, the Lagrangian multiplier method to do that, okay? So if we assume that the production function is twice differentiable, then the firm's problem is, Okay, so what we want to do is we want to build the Lagrangian, that's min. We want to minimize, okay, our cost, that's WL plus RK, subject to our constraint, okay, so lambda times Q minus FLK. Yeah, let's fix that a bit. And there. Now, this is our Lagrangian function, our main Lagrangian for cost minimization. Now, it's very, very similar to how it was done in the theory of the consumer behavior. Now, when we have a Lagrangian, the first thing to do is try to derive the first order conditions for the Lagrangian. And what we'll notice is that doing this, we can actually derive the first order conditions for cost minimization and the corresponding implications. So if we take the first order condition, so FOCs, okay, that's partial... Um, Lagrangian with respect to lambda equal to zero, partial of the Lagrangian with respect to um, L equal to zero, and partial of the Lagrangian with respect to K equal to zero. So this one, this is just going to be equal to the constraint. So that's Q minus F L K equal to zero. 
this one will be okay derive this one with respect to l so that's just w plus lambda okay times uh this is gonna be uh what you'll notice with this one okay this one will be uh plus lambda times negative uh so you uh this one is what you're concerned about okay so that's gonna be um partial of that function with respect to uh that's gonna be with respect to l okay and you're gonna equate that to zero then we're going to derive the Lagrangian again, but this time with respect to k, that's going to be r plus lambda. Then we're going to derive this one with respect to k now, that's minus partial f l k partial uh, k equal to zero. 